Hello everybody, hope you're having a, a good day. Um, we're going to be talking about the Newton polynomial today a little bit more and how you might decide to code it. Um, it's not going to be a long video, but it's going to be some uh, something that, uh, I don't know, it, it takes a little bit of, of, of thought and ingenuity to come up with some code that does the scheme that we talked about in the last lecture. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you look through the last lecture and, and understand it pretty well before you jump into this one. But uh, it should be it should be good. So why don't we get started? It's not going to be a long one today. So, um, yeah, coding the Newton polynomial. Uh, the scheme that we talked about it sounds really complicated, right? It it develop it developing it. I don't know. Seems like it's tough, but then you get into practice. You make up these trees to find the different coefficients of a Newton polynomial and the divided difference scheme really not that hard to get your head around once you do an example or two i really think um but thinking about how to automate it how to make a program do it not super straightforward so let's think about this for a second um what are the different ingredients that we need for this if we think of the scheme we start with n points we start with n points we're looking on the first step we have like the x's and the y's laid out and we need to find different divided differences between the uh, the consecutive ones. So suppose we had four points to start, we would get three of these first divided differences. And after that, we would get two of the second divided differences. And then we get one third divide, di divided difference. And so with, we would get like uh, one fewer of these divided differences on every single step of the scheme. So that's kind of what we need. If we're given n points more, more generally, we start by creating n minus 1 differences, and we use those differences to create n minus 2 new differences, repeating and repeating until there's only one difference to calculate. Okay, so it's interesting, right? Because the set of differences is itself perhaps an array of different numbers, but then we have multiple sets of those things. So if we're having multiple sets of arrays, there are some mathematical and programming structures that might be kind of helpful for this thing. It starts with an M, rhymes with matrices. It might be time to figure out what matrices do or how we can use them in MATLAB. Okay, one important thing is trying to figure out an organized way to refer to all of those different divided differences. And one reason, I said last, last class that the naming structure that I used for those differences um, was really convenient for some different reasons. And this is one of them. If you think about it, we had like these notations last uh, last lecture that were like f x1, x2, f x2, x3. For second divided differences, those numbers were, were um, you know, separated by two. The thing is that there's a unique combination of the two entries in each of those, um, um, those f with the square brackets that I used as the notation before that I can refer to each one of those uniquely in terms of a matrix entry. So yes, we need a good naming structure to keep things organized. And uh, we're gonna see what that looks like. Okay, um, I'm gonna stop for a second and just kind of give you a precursor for some basics about matrices in MATLAB because we haven't used them yet. Um, they're really important. MATLAB's very good at linear algebra stuff and good at vectors and matrices. So um, it's a useful thing to learn about, I think. And at the end of the next topic we do on interpolation, we're gonna need even more tools. So um, we'll be diving back into some more details with that. But here we just wanna get some basics down. Um, okay, it's possible you can assign entries on the fly with MATLAB. So without even defining a, a starting matrix, you can simply, you know, uh, enter uh, some some like m11 equals 30, m23 equals 5, etc. Like I've got in the top left of this page right now. If you do that, that automatically populates a matrix with some entries. So, and it fills unspecified entries with zeros. So if you put in these five entries, you'll get out this matrix. So it puts the right entries that you defined in the right places and puts zeros everywhere else. We're going to use this as we come forward. And as I said, there's more matrix operations. We'll get to those, but we don't need them for this right now. 
Okay, so let's think of our tree. Let's think of our tree. Usually, we would take those first divided differences and we'd use these two to find our, what was it, like f, x1, x2, something like that. And we would use these two and we'd define something that's f, x2, x3. I guess q here is what I use for the different y values and p is what I use for the x values. That's just to get away in case we're using x or y as symbolic variables. It doesn't really matter what you call it. And here we would say f, x3, x4. The second divided differences then separated by two, right? This We called this one f, x1, x3. And we called this one f, x2, x, whoops, x4. And the third divided difference would have been f, x1, x4. So if you think about it, all of these different, if we take those, those um, subscripts of the different x's, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 1, 3, 2, 4. They're all unique. There aren't any repetitions there, using this as a, as a, uh, um, as a scheme, right? As a notation. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign these so that instead of saying fx1, x2, in terms of code, why don't we assign that to a matrix entry that is one, two. And we'll assign this one here to a matrix entry that's two, three. And we'll do that for all of these, for all of these, for all of these, for all of these, and go through, but assigning different um, two-dimensional array entries, matrix entries, that each one of them is there and none of them overlap. Okay. There's one last question that I, I, I need to ask. We have the need to use this, 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 and this as well, right? Our, our calculations depend on those quantities as well. I don't have anything offhand, right? There aren't two different um, things that we can use there, but we can take advantage of some unfilled entries, right? Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, or Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4. What could we fill in on a matrix that isn't yet taken up here by the other entries in this tree? Well, if you think about it, the ones along the diagonal aren't. I could use M11 here to fill this in. And that's a spot in the matrix that isn't used yet, I can define uh, just the y value there. I can do the same thing here with two. I can do the same thing here with three. There's going to be enough space because we're creating a square matrix for that number of points. This should be good. So this is a, a cool strategy that lets us put all of the information from the tree into a matrix that MATLAB might be able to handle. <clears throat> we want to be able to handle it too, but we're going to program a computer to do it. Um, it looks like the scheme is going to be good. Okay, so we want to then, once we have all of everything, like we're, we've set the table, we've set the table all nicely, we want to figure out how to eat dinner, if you will. Um, we need to figure out how to actually um, read this table, how to construct it. You know, like if I'm thinking about the examples that we did last class, the idea is, okay, we need to use the things in that first column in order to get the things in the next column. There's one fewer of those things, and then I need to use those things to construct the next column, and so on and so forth until I get to the end. Okay, so, um, as I said, I guess, I guess I already did this stuff, but we associated all the quantities in the tree to a unique matrix entry that we can then refer to Okay, we wrote in the labels, so let's let's see how we might be able to um, to process this. So, in a list, the number of sets, the different columns that we have of divided differences that we have to calculate in sequence is equal to the number of points we had minus one. Right? If I go back up, if we had four points in total, we have three sets of columns to calculate. This one, this one, and this one. And they have three entries, two entries, and one entry. So we're going to uh, 
be going through, right? We're going to need to calculate those columns in sequence until we have them all through. That sounds like a loop because we're going through and doing things again and again and again. But for each of the columns, we're going to have to go through and calculate many things in turn, right? We have to calculate a number of different quantities, which sounds like another loop inside the first. So we're going to have a nested loop of some sort. We're going to say, okay, now that we're on the current column, let's go through and calculate the entries. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Each column of divided differences has one fewer quantity than the column before it. And so what we need is a nested loop, but the number of passes you do in the inner loop has to decrease with every single pass you complete in the outer loop. <laughs> so you go through the first time, you do it a bunch of times. You go through a second time, you do it a few, uh, one last time. You go through a third time, you do it one last time inside until you get to the end when there should only be one uh, calculation to make. Once you've got them all, the final polynomial is created by reading the coefficients from across the top of the tree. And I want you to take a look at the beauty of this, right? With this notation, what is the top of the tree? It's easy to refer to. It's all of the matrix entries with a one and a one and a one and a one in the first slot. So not hard to read. And it's all well organized so we can take the information that we need from the tree once we're finished. So pretty cool. Um, so here's some code. I've given some source code because it is pretty involved. It barely fits on the screen. So if I've used uh, that last example with the four points, one, zero, two, two, four minus two and seven minus one. And let's go through really carefully and see what we've done. I've defined X and Y values right here. So this is defining, defines X and Y values. All right, this is initializing. I've commented the rest, so I probably won't need to comment very much here, but um, this here is, you can see I'm populating that those matrix entry, the DDII, are the diagonal entries of a matrix that's called DD um, with those different Y values. So I'm starting off with the diagonals in place the way that we wrote on the last uh, uh, on the last page. Once we've got that, then I have this variable that are called numDDs, which tells us how many we need, um, how many of these divided differences that we need to calculate for the next column, and so on. And then it looks here that we have the main loop. Oops, that was a terrible brace. Let's try that again. This is our main loop. And notice that again, it's nested. There's another loop inside of here. And if you notice, it doesn't go from J equals one to the number of points or the number of points minus one. It goes to the number of divided differences you want. And on every pass of the loop, we're reducing that number by one so that I'm calculating the right number and I go right through. And then this here is really just doing the calculations that we did in the last example. And I'll let you go through that um, to figure that out and, and tie it back to that example that we did together um, from the last video on your own time, okay? Um, once we've got all of those different entries, notice that this, this line right here is just defining new matrix entries, new matrix entries, and so on. Um, once you've got that matrix populated, it's just a matter of uh, coming up with a polynomial. And the actual Newton polynomial is given by this code down here. So codes, the polynomial uh, in the end. So see, I've, I've declared a symbolic variable, x, and the symbolic f of x as well. And... Um, we need to actually construct that number of factors that are multiplied together in each term. So there's more and more and more. So that requires a loop in itself. And that's what this is doing right here. This loop is constructing that polynomial one term at a time until we've got the whole thing. And notice that the coefficients, the coefficients are taken from our tree. And they all have a first digit of one. The first entry is one because I want the ones off the top of the tree as we came up with in that last class.
And then finally, of course, we output the, the result. It's a little bit more involved, but it's a pretty cool approach. And um, it just goes to show you that uh, there's um, a, a few different ways to get the job done when it comes to this interpolation. So um, that's pretty much it. I'll let you play with this a little bit. Um, but uh, that was some, some cool code. I want to emphasize too, there are lots of ways to do this. I've had emails and, and conversations with students that are very um, worried that they found a different approach to do something. And uh, like in, in terms of a numerical method that differs from the code that I came up with. And that's cool. That's great. If you can find out your own algorithms, if you can build your own code to get the job done, that means you've gained some good understanding of what's going on. So uh, generally speaking, I just want you to learn how to think algorithmically, thinking in terms of functions and algorithms, loops, um, and uh, ingenious kind of ways of, of, of organizing and referring to information. Uh, here, matrices seem like a really good idea. Anyway, hopefully this was very helpful to you. Um, go back and watch the last video and then this one again to, to really cement things down. Um, but we have one more method that I want to talk about coming up soon on uh, polynomial interpolation. And it does something completely different to make sure that the degree of, a, of an interpolating polynomial never gets very big. It's a, a really important and commonly used strategy. So I hope you'll tune in and learn about cubic splines with me in the next video. So for now, uh, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. I'll see you soon.